And conscious means that you have to be conscious of what's going on in this world. You're fully aware and awake to what's going on in the world. That's what conscious rap means. So if you got conscious rap, that means you got unconscious rap. That means well, you got motherfuckers that's unconscious rapping. That means they're sleeping. They, they still under the spell of the light. They still under the spell of the king. Call me brother man, I'm not the rubber man Though I keep my Nazis in affairs, rap with some rubber bands Burning out the two cloaks, clan and with the grand There we misters, just butts of guns I'm given Trying to make more sovereign citizens, these minions Help kill your prophets, stole your treasury millions You heard it from your brother man, not a smother sellout Sess links in K2 Kush days, keep me red out I got the knowledge to make these silly hoes Question the pimping directors of music videos Gay laws and verses which trap on boots with heels Too much graphic art Faces, boobs are not real Since MCM and true They use timber and boots To get us all caught up in fashion Not the simple men roots Got our people on dogmatic Not metaphysic Exoteric, not esoteric Is how you missed it So out of it you couldn't feel the natural mystic Blowing through the air like it didn't give a shit I hear the dirty moors dissing Cause I said profanities A lot of these rap cheeks need to take off the panties Pull the thong out your crack Cause we're a bitch ass nigga Return to where the prophet found you Negro ass nigga It's time to choose you're either positive or you negative. You're either evil or you're good. You understand what I'm saying? Choose a side, nigga. I know what side I'm on. I throw a Molotov at the priest that works for the peace. All they want is our people to rest in peace. No attention of Allah with more stress to ease Cracker won't go home to spread himself the disease Genocidal epidemic kill us in high proportions Instead of mummified we stay boxing coffins Mayors attend funerals for PR purposes Where's the police escort? He replied with nervousness He said, I don't have those numbers or connections To have Metro Police lead your friend's funeral procession That's coming from Mr. Mayor, black community player No question in the hood, dropping off boxes of weapons Then blame black or black crime or natural causes Plus those doctors are not on point, but off a bit. Natural mystics prove they're not holistic. Hypocrite oaths make your children artistic. I'm at the point now where I'm saying I'm tired of mixing the medicine with the food. I'm tired of playing that game. Now I'm shoving straight medicine down your fucking throat, Islam, nigga. Islam, you know Islam, Islam, and greetings, Mars. Peace. And welcome back to another episode of Pardon the Interjection. Pardon me, pardon me. I am your host, Supreme L. And welcome back to another episode of Pardon the Interjection. I would love to give high honors, high, high honors to Prophet Noble Drew Ali and all the active Moors. Here on Pardon the Interjection, we dig up information to divulge to the people in the upliftment of fallen humanity. Today's show is geared towards our people, <laughs> as, normal, <laughs> as usual, the Moors. So uh, we're going to bring some very important information. And I want to first start off by bringing to the light Moorish Guide. Uh, and we're going to be speaking upon and about the successor to Prophet Noble Jew Ali since so many people want to get this uh, reincarnated and uh, Kirtman Bay thing all out of whack like they are the ones okay but um, I bring information you know and it's up to you to make the choice and to differentiate and choose for your own salvation I'm just charged with bringing the information and that's what I'm going to do to the best of my ability. Islam. So we go into Moorish, the National Edition Moorish Guide of 1928 to 1934. Brother E. Millie L., first Supreme Grand Sheik and Chairman of the Moorish Science Temple of America, 1928. To 1934. And it goes and says, The Grand Sheik and Chairman is one person, one office. Um, one, Act One. The Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the MSTA is in power. A. 
The biggest misunderstanding of the quote above is looking at the word and, A-N-D, in quotation, as part of a math equation. The word and in the sentence above does not mean to add as in one and one equals two. One grand sheik and one chairman equal two people. And in quotations in this sentence is neither an addition indicator nor a plus sign. We've learned how to use that word in the streets and too often it's used wrongly, especially when referring to Act 1 of the Divine Constitution and Bylaws. B. The word and in the quote above is English grammar only, not math. In English grammar, and is a conjunction, and a conjunction connects two or more words together. So, the Grand Sheik and the Chairman is linked together by the word and. The question is whether the link is singular or plural. If the link is plural, then the Grand Sheik and the Chairman are represented by two people. And if the link is singular, then the Grand Sheik and the Chairman is re represented by one person. 2. Act 1. The Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the MSTA is in power. A. In this case, the word is makes it singular, as in the Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the MSTA is in power. B. The word is in the quote above is singular. To find out the proper usage of the word, one must conjugate the verb to be, as in I, am, we, they, are, he, she, it, is. We learn the proper usage of the verb to be from the grammatical chart. Pardon me, grammatical chart. This is why we do not say I is or we am or he are. On the street, it is, just doesn't sound right. But in reality, it is not following the roles of grammar. C. According to the roles of grammar, the Grand Sheik and the Chairman is one person. If the quote, the Grand Sheik and the Chairman was two people, then it would read the Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the MSTA are in power, as in the role of grammar they are in quotations indicating more than one person however the word is not are is in the quote above meaning one person as in the role of grammar he she it is in this case he is in power one person three Act 1. The Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the MSTA is in power. A. The word the as in the Grand Sheik and the Chairman is referring to a job, position, or office which the person is holding. In this case, the person holding the position of the Grand Sheik and the position of the Chairman is the same person. B. The Grand Sheik is not a person but a position to be filled, and so is Chairman. C. The Grand Sheik, whom so happens to be holding the position at that time, in parentheses, and the Chairman, who so happens to be holding that position at that time, in parentheses, is in power. D. Note that members come and go. However, the offices of the Grand Sheik and the Chairman, not being people, but offices, are perpetual. 4. Example. 
The President of the United States is also the Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces. A. The President of the U.S.A. Although one person has two positions, each with their own job descriptions and responsibilities. The same holds with the Grand Sheik and the Chairman. One man with two responsibilities. We currently refer to the office of the Grand Sheik and the office of the Chairman as one office. B. As shown above, the Grand Sheik and the Chairman is one person. So in a literal sense, the office of Grand Sheik and the office of the chairman are two separate offices held by one person. Because of this, it is reasonable and prudent, or pardon me, prudent, the way they have these spellings up here is not to the best, but we're going to get through it. As they spell it because, B-E-C-O-U-S-E, -E, and... <laughs> Well, pardon the interjection, and we continue. It is reasonable and prudent to have both the Grand Sheik and the Chairman responsibilities operate out of one office. One person, one office, two job descriptions and responsibilities, not unlike the executive office in parentheses of the President of the Unity States of America. Or Union States of America, where they have Unity States of America. Pardon the interjection, and we continue. C. Barack Obama is or was the President and Commander in Chief of the United States of America. 5. Precedent is another reason why we do not split the Grand Sheik and the Chairman positions. D. When Prophet Noble Joe Ali formed the Supreme Body and gave them all power and authority equal to himself, rather than splitting the power, he, the Prophet, sat as chairman over the body. This way, the two highest positions of authority are not split, but held by one person. E. Likewise, our brother E. Millie L., upon receiving the position of chairman, did not relinquish the position of Supreme Grand Sheik, thereby becoming the first Supreme Grand Sheik and Chairman. This way, the two highest positions of authority are not split, but held by one person. Therefore, in reference to Act 1 of our Divine Constitution and Bylaws, the Grand Sheik and the Chairman being one person is in keeping with the President set by both Noble Jew Ali, the Prophet, and Brother E. Millie L., the first Supreme Grand and Chairman Islam. So, those who are confused about who is the successor and who holds the rights, clearly, Brother E. Millie L. is the Supreme Grand Sheik and Chairman and rightful successor to Prophet Noble Jawali. Now, I want to go switch up a little gears right now and pardon me. Pardon me. Get a sip of agua. <laughs> we need that agua. Pardon me. Ah. I want to read uh, just a short passage from uh, one of my jewels that I have pulled out the treasure chest and it is called Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers on page 108 uh, second paragraph and I also want to uh, say that this backs my good brother Jose Pimento Bay um, where it says whites and blacks in Greece and we know about the misnomers white and black okay so don't get it twisted we're only doing this for 
educational purposes only. <laughs> Pardon the interjection, and we continue with notes on Othello. Othello's race since the days of Edmund Cain, K-E-A-N, 1787, and 1833, has been in dispute. Here are some facts to be remembered as regards this. Shakespeare lifted his plot largely from the Hecatomomythi, or spell it H-E-C-A-T-O-M-M-I-T-H-I, in parentheses, novella, the seventh, 1608, by Cynthia, an Italian romancer. Cynthia only called his character the Moor, M-O-O-R, and spoke of his Negraza, Negraza, N-E-G-R-E-Z-Z-A, or blackness of skin, to the Moor, in parentheses, Shakespeare gave a name, Othello, which is said to be of German origin. As I said before, the union of a white woman of high birth and a black man has been a popular theme since very early times. On the continent, there was little or no prejudice to sometimes to so-called, pardon me, mixed marriages, but in England, then engaged in capturing Negroes and selling them in the Americas. Color prejudice began to develop. There are clear evidences of this in certain of Shakespeare's contemporaries as George Herbert's A Fair Nymph Scorning, A Black Boy Courting Her, John Cleveland's The Black Amour and Her Loves, Christopher Marlowe's Lust, Dominion, Pelley's Tragical Battle of Alcazar, and in Shakespeare's own Merchant of Venice, where Portia dismisses her dark-skinned suitor, the Prince of Morocco. Pardon the interjection. Now it says, her dark-skinned suitor, the Prince of Morocco. Now, for all you all thinking that these, uh, the prince or uh, Moroccans are pale faced or Europeans, no, right here even it says in its own dark skinned suitor. And then it don't even say Negro, it says dark skinned suitor. The prince of Morocco with let all of his complexion choose me so. Act 2, section 6. It must be remembered that while the scene of Othello is Venetian, its psychology is English. Now, I take it that Shakespeare seeing the union of quote unquote Negroes and white women, quote unquote, and also the growing prejudice against these Negroes made Othello a Negro for dramatic effect. Moreover, as I said, the subject of the black man and the white woman, in quotation, had not only been an alluring one long before him, but that two of his contemporaries, Pell and Marlowe, had already written successful Miscegenation plays. Shakespeare describes Othello color and race in quotation so clearly that it is only those who read present conditions into those of centuries ago could say that he would not be own be guilty of so great an artistic error as to make him a Negro. Pardon the interjection. And that was just to go back over so-called, so-called 
Negro ancestry in the so-called white race. All right, because we know these are to be misnomers. And uh, basically, what I wanted to take back to here on page one zero nine, it says the suitor, and it says where Portia dismisses her dark-skinned suitor, the prince of Morocco. Again, I say that. So all you know is the Prince of Morocco was not no pale Arab, okay? Especially when it's talking about these times. So, and that's coming out of Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. It is a, it's a lot of good information in here, Morris, especially some good pictures, you know? And uh, to continue with our lessons, that lightly coming out I want to make the correction of Moore's order of the round table civic lesson book number one that's what we're reading from to continue the lessons um, it says These days, contemporary, in parentheses, the Moors, in their branded status, are legally abused by color of law and coerced into fraudulent non-mutual adhesion contracts, legalized theft, in parentheses, imprisoned with color of law and color of authority, encouraged or tricked into using the slaveholders' false nation brands and labels listed above. All this suffering and more for a lack of knowledge. These psychological and legal war tactics deny them human rights, protections, and immunities at law. However, if nationalized in their true national sovereign names, parentage in parentheses and made conscious of their birthrights they can learn the truth of law and history and begin to claim their human rights in accord with the jure constitutional law a written national constitution is the civic key to national and international rights immunities and protections afforded a people of a nation Nationality is the missing key, element denied to, but needed by branded people to be recognized by the international community of nations as sovereigns. This is the honor of your mothers and fathers and the return of your Moorish birthrights, Moors. Honor your mothers and your fathers. Moors are all and any dark and light olive-skinned people of Asiatic origin or African descent, in quotation. The creed of their forefathers is the science of Islam. They are the mothers and fathers of the human family, founders of civilization. The most ancient mobile civilizations were matriarchal. The science of astrology was at the center of all the ancient great civilizations and is used today by all the powerful leading governments and their officials. All government officials, industrialists, and religious leaders are well aware of these facts, although most of them deny it in the public arena. The Moabites slash Moors have been sailing the old ocean and sea routes for thousands upon thousands of centuries. The earth is not new to the Moors, nor is it a chemical makeup. The Moors were and are masters of metaphysical science, navigation, architecture, agriculture, geometry, masonry, art. 
horticulture, the laws of nature, cosmology, etc. The Moors have no valid reason to insist on being other than themselves in these days, in spite of the political coercion and abuse. Moors should consider the probability that much of their abuse is due to their living a false culture and not being themselves. The lost found nation of Moors was never an issue of physical distance. The Moors have been mentally displaced from their own lands. The ancient Moabites, our parentage, in parentheses, have already established civilization and science on this earth. Moors should seek the knowledge and culture of their mothers and forefathers, honor them. The principle and lesson implied is self-preservation. One who knows self is certainly better prepared and able to preserve and make progress for the self. Know thyself. Islam. I self law am master. The spell of the ghouls is broken. A few actual facts for Moors, a people in adversity. One, Negro and black are synonymous. They mean exactly the same thing. Black is derived from English Latin and Negro is derived from Latin. Black means civil litter mortus, unconsciousness, debased social and moral condition and death. Two. The word America does not come from Europeans as it has been assumed due to reconstructed history. America is actually a corruption of the Moorish Latin words al murak meaning al, al, descendants of Murak, Moroccans. Three, when the word Christian is used by Europeans in politics, literature and history it is definitely and only in reference to the anglo saxon political and social economic system european peoples and their institutions christendom is void of benefit to any oriental peoples or their political social and economic conditions or institutions. Do not get emotional for lack of knowledge or take these facts personal. They are presented for your objective observation and benefit. The commonly used word white as applied to Europeans is a political caste label and not a national pedigree name. The Whigs Party, W-H-I-G-S Party, the Whigs Party, which was of the red peoples as the colonizing Europeans called themselves prior to 1854, adopted the word White People's Party in Philadelphia, Philadelphia in parentheses, with the 1854 to the 1863 Emancipation Proclamation. This must be known and understood by all Moors when making any serious social or political communications. These actual facts must always be considered and factored into all civic activities. They will prove invaluable as Moors address politics, economics, social change, fraudulent voting rights or beliefs and benefits. Remember, 
all political activities and benefits are measured by status first, your nationality and legal standing, in parentheses, and all lawful or legal procedures. The commonly used word black, B-L-A-C-Q, pardon me, B-L-A-C-K, as applied to Moors, is a political caste label and not a national pedigree name. The colonizing Dutch masters coined the black label along with other adjectives as appellations for their indentured Moors as void of rights, chattel property. Blacks are categorized in government circles and among sens sensitive social engineering pol policy documents as it. IT. 6. Concerning the Americas, a number one priority political position of all European colonists and their descendants is to speak to Moors only in terms of displacement. Displacement is a cardinal rule when referring to their relationships with or conversing with or conversing with the Moors. You know, conversing, conversing, having conversations, pardon the interjection, and we continue. Especially those labeled as blacks and Negroes. This is a necessary tool of psychological warfare, warfare in the usurpation of the land and the Moors' sovereignty. They teach their agents among the Moors to do the same, issuing letters and decrees to them as political, social, and economic incentives. Beware. 7. Notice and analyze the reference to the unnatural alliance between the Negroes and the Union Leagues as traditionally mentioned by clanners, examine carefully the operations and principles statement of 1868 by the order of the Ku Klux Klan. This is clearly exposing the fact that Negroes cannot and can never legally or lawfully be citizens of the colonial union of the United States of America. Any actions on the part of any government official, officials and citizens of the Union of States which imply or try to make Negro citizens of their Union by whatever means is definitely a violation of the Constitution. The Constitution is the charter and the law of the land from which their government derives any valid or de jure law or authority. This position is correct and valid on the part of the KKK, although generally not accepted as valid or constitutional by naive, unread, or misinformed people. The word Negro as an appellation to people is a political caste status category. It was coined and designated to label displaced Moors who, by virtue of war, subjugation, or mutual agreement, became the corporate chattel property of the Union of States European citizens and not citizens themselves. Their U.S. of A constitution of the six European nations of North America supports this fact. Moors must stop trying to force themselves upon the members of the Union of State Society U.S. of A. Moors must also cease the activity or the active fraud of using the Albion or Albino Albion European colonist family surnames. 8. As Negroes and Blacks 
synonymous in parentheses, Moors have no rights at law. That any, quote, unquote, in parentheses, white man needs to or is obligated to honor or respect. Negro and black, etc. are flaw false appellations. More, M-U-U-R, slash more, M-O-O-R, is the true national pedigree of the subjugated people misrepresented as black and has standing at law, nationally and internationally. The persistent and insistence of the use of the black and negro brands legally imply acquiescence at law. Negro is not a human or not of the human family, but is legally categorized as it or a thing and has no human rights to review or protect by any constitution. This is the absolutely legal and valid position of the KKK and the Unions of States Society. Moors need to learn the truth about the danger of holding on to substituting and using the fraudulent slave labels as identities. A most troubling and effective political manipulation tactic has been used against the subjugated Moors in the Americas. That tactic is the placement of quote unquote blacks and Negroes in token political positions with pseudo-government powers which are designated to trick, oppress, tax, and maintain suppression among their own peoples. These range in the areas of municipal police operating in a non-sovereign capacity, judges and politicians operating in a non-sovereign capacity, and the sub-government agents and agencies, all with no true sovereign authority derived from the people they govern. This gives the appearance of the assist existence of mutuality and agreed sovereign relinquishment of rule and authority from the Negroes slash blacks who are unqualified having no self authority in brackets to the otherwise fake fraudulent usurpative and de facto union of state society corporation governments and union citizenry citizenry this color of law position is deceptively used to govern steal and claim jurisdiction over indigenous moors people's birthrights sovereignty affairs and land now unbiased test and exercise now we're gonna go past that I'm gonna come back on it because that's a test okay we're gonna go down to See how much time, partner, partner, partner. We're going to go down to resolution of the Union of States slave and ward problems. The obvious answer to the political, economic, and social problems in the Union of States U.S. of A. colorable jurisdictions is the return of the Moorish nation's national names, birthrights, and sovereign rights to self-government. This must include national land rights with supports and protections of the international body politic of the extended nations. There must be mass re-education of Moors, 
labeled as blacks in, in brackets to self-knowledge, birthrights, proper government, and zodiac constitutional law. The indigenous Moors have been held to servitude, unconscionable contracts, and forced into the Union of States, U.S.A. Fraudulent wardship and nom de guerre political status. To assist in the remedy, internationally sanctioned world courts mutually assembled, having multiple national enforcement powers, may be established to observe, supervise, and assist the Moors nation in the necessary logistics related to the sorely needed transition to de jure law in Northwest Alvarac, North America, in parentheses. Mass re-education into self-knowledge must be the focus of the oppressed Moors of the Northwest Territories. The purging of de facto government and colorable law must be the order of the day. This by mandate of law, nature's law, the Moorish order of the great seal, justice, and all civilized and lawful national governments. The social, economic, and political nigger industry problem can and will, can and will only be solved by releasing the secret history of the North Gate and activating the de jure conscious and uncompromised representative government of the sovereign Moorish nation of Northwest of Mexico, Africa, America, Islam. And what about the Q Clutch Clan? Operations and Principles, 1868. The KKK or the Ku Klux Klan is one of the two largest of the secret organizations of Christendom that flourished in the Southern territories of North America during the period of Reconstruction. The KKK was founded and pardon me, I can't make that out. Why would they? Is it Pulaski, Tennessee? P U L I. What is that? P U L I S. It's look like it's redacted. Partner, partner interjection. It's kind of redacted, but I'm going to make it out. I think P U L I S K. I, I think that's what it is. Pardon me if it's not. We'll have to come back on that. But it does it look like it says Pulaski. P-U-L, maybe L-I or P-U-L-I-S-K-I. Pardon the interjection. And we continue. And is noted for its sincere and unmoved dedication and honor to the Christian creed and to the Constitution of the Union of States. Tennessee entered the Union of States Society in the moon or month of June 1st, 1796 AD, 1216 Moore's calendar, and takes the honors of first home of the Clanners. The KKK order grew very rapidly in 1867 and 1868. 1287 and 1288 Moore's calendar. The general organization of the Klan was perfected in May of the year 1867, at which time a constitution was adopted. The second and modern society of the KKK was funded in 1915 AD 1335 Moore's calendar. In Atlanta, Georgia. Pardon the interjection. Yes, I used to uh, domicile and live in Georgia. 
I uh, still have family there now. And uh, I do know that the KKK had, I think, their first major uh, rally, uh, rally out uh, in Georgia, uh, Stone Mountain. I think, yeah, that's what it was. It, I think they had their first Klan rally or major Klan rally in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, in, in what's called Stone Mountain, Stone Mountain, Georgia. This big ass mountain. <laughs> and I think they had walked up it or walked around it. But yes, I have been there in Georgia. So part of the interjection, I want to put a little bit of that just the information out there. And we continue. The major aim of the KKK order is the arbitrary regulation of life by quote unquote white Christian Protestants. KKK is also spelled with a hyphen as Ku hyphen clutch clan. A few of the other Christian secret orders that merit study and review are 1. The Knights of Columbus 2. The Knights of the White Camellia 3. The Society of the White Rose 4. The White League Clanners Clanner is the designation used to identify a member of either one of the secret societies KKK is derived from the Greek word kuklos, K-Y-K-L-O-S, which means a circle. The founders of the KKK were clearly using high-cultured cosmolog cosmological science in its structural constitution. This secret order was not founded by ignorant men, therefore should not be viewed and or dismissed as merely an outlaw organization of unreasonable people gone wild with hate and unconstitutional violence. This would be a very inaccurate assessment. Clanners have traditionally honored their union of states constitution with more orthodox respect than others who have criticized the Klan. Most critics have never read the U.S. Constitution. General Nathan Bedford Forrest, a Union of States Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest, was the first Grand Wizard of the KKK. The KKK order was effective in frightening the Negro out of his unnatural alliance with the Union Leagues, but was also used as a cloak for lawlessness, land theft, and other forms of violence. The KKK often did the clandestine work which the Union of States government officials would not openly declare or do in the public arena. In effect, the KKK was and is used as a willing scapegoat and partner of the Union Society for executing in secret or open some of the extremely violent or negative activities or ordinances derived from and or supported by the state's Christian black codes the Negro Acts and other laws and ordinances governing free blacks. The Black Codes and Negro Acts could and would be animated and enforced, whether in the public or the private sector of the Union. The KKK originated within the Union of States Government circles, having the mission of preserving and protecting Christendom at large. If this fact is not known or understood, then one cannot objectively analyze United States of America's history 
development and the reason of the non-ending so-called race problem in quotation. The KKK was and is part and partial P-R-P-A-R-T-I-A-L and non-official branch of the Union of States government using the power of that government and pervading all levels of the Union government agencies to actualize their mission. A lack of knowledge of the purpose and origin of the KKK by Negroes and Blacks have traditionally allowed U.S. of A government officials to appear naive and feign disassociation to the KKK clan order. The mutual relationship of the Union of States and the KKK orders is as sound, as mutual and as natural as water being wet. Non-objective and angry truth mixed with frustration and inaccurate rhetoric from the subjugated black slash negro branded Moors communities blinds them to the fact that they are not and cannot be citizens of the Union of State Society. The people who insisted that they are Negro and Black in parentheses, have yet to act or recognize the fact, the need and the necessity to form their own government, honoring their own mothers and fathers and to cease and desist trying to force themselves into a sealed contract constitutional union of which they can never be a part. This is one of the true root causes of the hostilities directed towards blacks from the secret orders of the KKK and similar secret societies of Christian Dome. For the sake of truth, it must be said again that the position on purpose of the KKK orders is firm, dedicated, and for the empire. The clan's focus is for the preservation of the albanic minority and not as personal as it may sometimes appear to black. The KKK is the in-house workhorse arm of the Union of States government and is serving well as the grand protectors of the Christian creed and the Holy Roman Empire. Established in the Western Hemisphere on Moorish soils. Review the signatories of the Union of States Constitution. Okay, we still got a little time. We just had to check it out. Pardon the interjection. And we continue. The Union of States Congress and the Klan. The Union of States Congress took cognizance of the public opinions, reactions, and recognition. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Okay, let's start that over. Okay. The Union of States Congress took cognizance of the public opinions, reactions, and recognition that the KKK was confident and blatant in their hostile activities against blacks and or their white sympathizers. An obvious policy of connection and protection was suspected. There was political need to feign separation between elected government officials, the KKK, and the other similar orders and secret societies. 
the bold and open activities of the KKK orders and others, such as the Knights of the White Camellia, was often exposing the Union States government's unlawful and ex post facto position with the insurance of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. This caused rebellion and confusion among the citizenry, and also caused many of the state's chattel Negroes to catch on to the hoax. Their Congress passed the Force Act on May 31st, 1870 AD, 1290 Morse calendar, and the KKK Act, the Ku Klux Klan Act on April 20th, 1871, 1291 Morse calendar. The Klan acts were designed to discourage the open use of force and violence directed towards blacks and Negroes who were trying to assimilate into the contractually sealed political economic Christian Union. The assimilation activities by Negroes and blacks was and is one of the great motivating factors of the KKK and similar Christian organization. The passage of the Klan Acts by the Union of States Congress, however, caused some of the complaining and festering distrust among, among the illiterate slaves, blacks, to wane. Public faith in the system was tentative, but largely restored. With hope and faith somewhat restored, not that there was any choice in parentheses, the hopeful black slash Negroes would willingly and happily fight in wars against their own people, falsely believing that they were Christian citizens of the Union free and able to own property. Though clearly false by any measure of law, the promise of black Negro citizenship into the Union society with Christian status was to become a cherished dream and would remain just that, a dream. The false citizenship promise and civil rights propaganda effectively buried the true solution-oriented issues, applying sovereignty discussions among the famed as free blacks and Negroes. Now, we're going to take it up and have to come back and finish this lessons out because our time is becoming short and it's going to be I don't know how much time I have I got let me see I'm going to try to I'm going to push I'm going to try to push at least five more minutes out of this time because I want to finish this part up right here part in the interjection now and we continue reacting to rising social unrest a union of states congressional committee sat during the summer of 1871 A.D. 1291 Morse calendar, recording 13 volumes of testimony on the social, economic, and political conditions in the South. The Union's Congress was caught in a political conflict of interest position. They were having to pacify the, pardon me, displaced blacks and at the same time avoid constitutional confrontation with their own union of state citizenry to whom they were obligated for further references see the report of the joint select committee united states of america 42nd congress second session senate report number 41 on the kkk the strategy conceived to claim the Negroes and continue to use them as an economic base and cannon fodder was highly successful and is still effective today. 
Okay, now we're gonna have to end it off here. And like I say, this is some pretty good information that I advise you to check out, family, because it's really, it's really crazy how people don't think, you know, some people don't study and learn and think, and you would never in a, in a million years, if you think as a nigger, you would be like a nigger, <laughs> you know, and think, well, Ku KK Clay, what the fuck, KKK, uh, the Kushkas Clan, these nigger haters, they, they don't hate, they hate us, they hate black people, they hate niggers, they, and if for a while you shouldn't put yourself and call yourself a nigger, or black, but you get the wrong interpretation of them, you know, they're trying to, law, the nature's first law is self-preservation, and they want to preserve them, we should be wanting to preserve us, where we fell, get back up, and preserve us, where we fell, don't fall no more more but the information is out there it's definitely out there and we're going to come back and we're going to finish this up because they have creed character and objects of the order um, titles Territory and its divisions. Interrogations to be asked. You know, and that's going to be some of the things we're going to go back over when we come back for Moore's Order of the Round Table Civic Lessons, Book Number One by Grand Sheik, National Grand Sheik, Taj Tariq Bey. Peace be upon that Moore. Peace be upon the elder, Taj Tariq Bay. I give thanks, big bro. Thank you for the work you're doing and you've done. And it's an honor for me to go back over these for the family and present it to them. For all those who may not know about this book or know about this lesson, all who do, I give thanks to for still listening. And I give thanks to the ones who are listening and don't know about it one of our lesson books because yes this is a lesson book for me too so I want to say with that the information is out there more the information is out there especially by it being Black History Month so called so called Black History Month I implore you to go and study 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 yourself more because you're not Negro, Black, or Color. And with that being said, you'll be amazed at the jewels you'll find on your treasure hunt, Mars. I love you, Mars. And that's going to take us again to the top of the hour for our show. It's been another, another blissful one. And I want to thank you for joining me again on another episode of Pardon the Interjection. I'm your host, Supreme L. As I say, stay safe until the next episode. Islam, love, and peace forevermore. Yeah, check it. Uh, yeah. Listen. I'm fighting out of the red corner. With this mic I chose you, the power choke hold Throw stone cold and your body is the ice mold Told him give it back, you're not deserving of the ice gold Trash him like you never served the purpose in the wife's home Price to take you off for the charts cost Less than a second that I kill you with these bars No handouts, boy, yeah, work till I pass out, boy To break the chain of command, it's a knockout, boy I get it there till I cash out, boy Pay respect to a queen bossy In the streets where they feel us, only niggas eating System beating, competing for defeating and defeating losses Wrong move to think my feet Exhausted, 
Seven hustles, pick the muscle, yeah, I feed the market. Grand slamming and you know the target. Aim high, level up, and never give up on this dream I started. Not even gravity can keep me parted. I got the recipe, unless it's me, my message reads this game is garbage. I see how easily they keep departed. The mainstream and underground, mainly cause my thunder sound and neatly pound. Where all these motherfucking freaks retarded. I'm only certain that I'm platinum when my tunes regarded. Without a plaque, without a contract, I'm fed like the boss is. I'm high off responses like the loud that's exotic. Plateau on the hundred, break the barrier. Is a charge to my record, but a fire full of shit that reaches ready for the record. Bet any violator will be stepping in my section. Spiral in this pen, make these paper planes my weapon. Dropping bombs for cadets who didn't keep the lesson. Tongue stay strapped like a Smith and Wesson. Now let me be your crew after I held the skeleton. Bust the ram cause my bar game crazy. Rod digging on you lames cause this earth can't pace me. Try and face me. Roads.